dystopian times. There is a new report by the Commonwealth Fund, and what they find is that um, the United States of America ranks dead last in both healthcare outcomes and overall spending when it comes to healthcare in the United States of America. Now, what they say here is that there's a couple of reasons um, why some systems, uh, healthcare systems, perform better than than ours. So they provide universal coverage and remove most cost barriers. They invest in primary care systems to ensure that high value services are equitably available in all communities to all people. They reduce administrative burdens that divert time, efforts, and spending from health improvement efforts. And they invest in social services, especially for children and working age adults. Now, I just want to read a couple of paragraphs from this story because I think that most of us on the panel already know the fundamentals about American healthcare and how broken it is. Uh, but this is from Jake Johnson of Common Dreams, who's brilliant, by the way. Um, so basically, using a range of criteria to evaluate the healthcare systems of 11 countries, Australia, Canada, France, Germany, the, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, and United Kingdom, and the United States, the Commonwealth Fund's latest analysis shows that the U.S. once again ranks last on access to care, administrative efficiency, equity, and, care, and, and healthcare outcomes. The lone bright spot for the for-profit U.S. healthcare system, there is a bright spot, according to the new report, is in a category dubbed care process, which includes measures of preventative care, safe care, coordinated care, and engagement and patient preferences. So, I mean, there's some good, right? There's no question our cruel for-profit healthcare system is broken. Representative Pramila Jayapal, chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus and lead House sponsor of the Medicare for All Act of 2021, said in a response to the report. It's time to fix it, Jayapal added. It's time to guarantee healthcare as a human right. It's time for Medicare for all. So what I want to do, and I, I've done this on the program before. I think the very first time I ever spoke with David Doyle, I asked, like, what, what's it like in Canada if you, if you need to go to a doctor? And I always want to, like, if, if I'm talking to someone who doesn't live in the United States, I always encourage them to share their experience because I just, I genuinely don't believe that our peers in America understand what we're missing. Um, so we'll go to David and then he um, about your healthcare stories, because I think this is really uh, important. Yeah. So th the first thing I always tell Americans is that I never think about healthcare. And that's the biggest benefit of having a single payer system is you just never think like there's no reason to think about healthcare unless you need it. So and when I need it, if I need to go to the doctor, I we all get a health card. You walk in, you show your health card. They, you know, they check the computer, you go in and then you go home. <laughs> like that's the entire process and so it, it it's it's it, and I, I should be clear here i mean canada ranks second last on that list for good reason we don't cover dental care we don't cover pharma care home care isn't covered long-term care like retirement homes aren't covered so there are serious gaps in our system for sure but it's because our system doesn't go far enough so in fact bernie's medicare for all plan if enacted would go further than the canadian healthcare system so there's definitely downsides to our system because it doesn't go far enough but just basic you know, basic care going to your 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 family doctor is a very simple, streamlined process. I had surgery once, same thing. I mean, it was booked. It, it wasn't a you know a um anything urgent, so it was booked three months ahead of time. I went on the day. I walk in again, show my health card. <laughs> they they bring me in. Had the surgery. I came home. There's no you know on the phone with insurance companies. None of that's going on. It's all just covered, all free. And the only time I ever had to actually pay for healthcare is is um, for prescriptions, but they're always, I mean, at least in in my case, they've always been, you know, minuscule, like, you know, 20 bucks for a month of, of medication for something. But, uh, you know, other people have had, uh, you know, uh, worse stories in Canada with Pharmacare because they have a lot more to pay for. So it, it's, it's different depending on your experience. But um, yeah, I mean, the biggest benefit is you just never think about it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm curious, Heem, and this is kind of hard to assess, but in the event there were, you know, there was a party, if, um, I don't know, uh, the liberals in Canada, they uh, proposed an American-based healthcare system, a, a private model. How do you think that would go over in Canada? Even the conservatives here don't push for that kind yeah. of model. And even in the UK, too, the con they'll push for, like, maybe defunding it a little bit, but it's so popular here that it, and it started on, on a provincial level and then spread across the rest of the country and it's never looked back since um and it will i don't think it'll ever change uh hopefully fingers crossed i will say um I, i'll david brought up some amazing things not worrying is a huge one um just to give a little insight about my experience so i do cancer research uh for my phd and um and i have family members that are in healthcare. and one thing that's very important to 
po point out and to push back on uh, people who are anti um, universal health care is to mention that there's still incentive for doctors to hmm. make money. So how it works is when David shows up to his, to the office with his health card, uh, the doctor, just the, the secretary, whatever, will scan his card or his code and his number and they will build the government. So the doctors are actually private contractors a lot of the time. And so they can work as much or as little as they want and make as much or as little money as they want. Um, most of our doctors here aren't actually publicly employed uh, employees. So here in Ontario, we have a list that we publish every year called the Sunshine List, which is like uh, people who make over $100,000 a year and work in the public sector. So it could be like energy workers, police officers, things like this. And very few doctors are actually on this list. Very, very few like radiologists and stuff that, that are employed by the hospital. But other than that, most doctors run a private practice. So that's the one thing that I think is um, is a nice benefit that Canada has maybe over the UK because we have we still have the incentivization that people always rip on and say like, oh, who's going to want to become a doctor? Da, 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 right. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing I will say is, uh, like David said, I have had the similar uh, experience. One day I woke up and I had an extreme pain in my back. I went to the emergency room. I got surgery that night. So it's not like this long wait time fucking craziest thing in the world like most places in the world they just triage you based on how bad you need care if you show up and you're gushing blood they're not going to be like okay you have to wait seven hours <laughs> like <laughs> i don't understand this caricature that people make sometimes like and, yeah. and, and and i've heard i don't know maybe i've seen i've heard david make this or maybe kyle kalinsky where they say in america you triage too you just triage based off of who's got the money or who's yeah. got right. the coverage mm -hmm. right yeah. and one last thing i'll say on this is as we learn more about medicine, we realize how important preventative care and early diagnosis is. Your outcomes, if you get prostate cancer at stage one diagnosed versus stage four diagnosed, are, are worlds apart, right? When it comes to mortality rates, five year, 10 year mortality rates. The sooner you can um, detect these things, the better outcomes you have, the less it's going to cost the entire system down the line. It's much easier to do a quick uh, surgery or radiation on a small tumor versus like multiple rounds of chemotherapy because now the cancer is metastasized all over your body. So that's another really important point is the fact that in America right now, you have people who will get a little bump on their arm or in their breast, but they'll be too scared to go to the doctor. They'll put it off, put it off, put it off, put it off, put it off. No, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that, I don't want to pay the copay. I don't want to pay the and then it's too late, right? So that's another massive thing. And uh, I think I touched on the things I wanted to touch on. And I think there was one other thing, but I forgot for now. Um, we can yeah, it's back amazing. Back. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I love. I think that your ex like you guys sharing your experiences is really, really crucial because I, I don't know if Sarah and Donna have the same experiences as me, but people are genuinely afraid of the prospect of universal healthcare here. People that I've talked to, even family members, because they feel as if it's you know it's it's foreign. First of all, right? It's literally a foreign concept because we don't have that here. But I try to make it more familiar, right? I, I talk about uh, Medicare. Medicaid, like these types of programs that have existed in the United States that are loved. Um, you know, if you're a veteran in the United States, you kind of have a version of, of you know, um, universal health care. So trying to, like, make it seem less foreign and more familiar is important. And, like, getting Canadians and British people to weigh in, I, I think, is honestly one of the most rhetorically effective. Things. It's so effective. Yeah, it's good, so effective. good on you. Yeah. yeah. Mike, I, I, Mike, I have a story I'd love to share with you to give contrast to this. Sure. So uh, a lot of people don't know about this, but when I was a kid, I lived in New Zealand. My dad is a scientist and he was doing research there. And so my mom tells me this story and I contrasted it with what happened to her during 2019 Christmas. And here's, here's what happened. My mom had one of my siblings in a C-section. And not only is everything, you know, completely paid for at, uh, you know, point of service, which means you're not paying anything out of pocket. After she had the C-section, she was sent home and she was also sent home with a helper that came in every day to help her with certain things, move certain things around. Because when you have a C-section for several months, you're not allowed to lift heavy things. And so um, this is healthcare in New Zealand. OK, healthcare in New Zealand. Now, contrast it with, with this with the United States. Christmas, the day uh, on Christmas Eve, my mom hurt her knee while she was climbing up the stairs. And 
we took her into you know an orthopedic care place and there is a when we go in there the doctor came in looked at it says we need to do an mri and i said that's great there's this huge window there's a big mri machine here i was very happy let's go do it and you know he was like okay let me go get this set up and then they come back 30 minutes later you know how they make you sit in the room forever and ever and they say well the doctor's in network but the mri machine is not what? Oh, I didn't know the MRI machine didn't take its licensing test. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. I think that was the day I was like, you got to be kidding me because oh she God. can't walk. She hurt her knees. That's wow. crazy. And, the, and you know what's crazy? You bring up MRI machine. I, I, I went through a patient's chart like I think two weeks ago. You would not believe one patient had 70 different treatments, imaging, MRI, PET scan, CT scan, radiation, chemotherapy. Imagine if all of these things fell on the shoulder of one person to have to financially pay for or even mm. pay partially for, right? It's like unfathomable. And that's, and as again, you saw on the last topic, I'm kind of like, uh, maybe not as left as some of you guys are on some like economic issues. But on this one issue, when it comes to healthcare, because of the cost, uh, that it, it that, because of the burden that it has on one person, it, the the cost has to be spread around, and mm -hmm. uh, that's why I'm super pro universal healthcare because that cost has to has to has to get spread around. And uh, like you said, the MRI machine being out of <laughs> network, David and I have never had to worry about. We could go anywhere in the country, get false fall sick, and, 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 and that's right, right, David. Like even yeah. though we have OHIP, we can get sick in any province. Yeah, it's still I think it's, it's still it transfers. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I forgot to mention. I mean. I had a kid uh, six months ago, <laughs> and so and we were thank you, and we were uh, we had to be in the hospital for you know a couple of extra days than than most people uh, do uh, uh, in that process, and still like you know of course no bill nothing they took care of us great and it's just we go home and we have our child and there's no worried about we're not worried about you know the bills or anything it's 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 peace of mind that universal healthcare gives you that you know Americans really have to understand that. Yeah. And even if you have insurance, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're like protected because my dad was a veteran. So he basically had universal health care, but there were ambulance rides that he took. He'd go to hospitals that weren't the VA's hospitals, but then, you know, there he, it could be covered by Medicaid. And so there's a lot of overlap, but then there's a lot of parts that are left out. So like after my dad passed away last year, my mom got bill after bill after bill and it's probably about 80 to a hundred thousand dollars worth of medical bills and in terms of like which ones she has to actually pay she's like i have no idea um i don't know if these bills are actually covered by insurance the ones that we that we have or the va but you, but you get them anyway and it's kind of like this well you know you cross your fingers and hope that you don't you don't get sued your social security doesn't get you know uh, garnished it's it's so even like even if you're covered there's still like that peace of mind in America is just it's not there. And it's 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 bizarre. Sarah, have you had the same conversations that I've had where people genuinely feel frightened by the prospect of universal health care? So I well, we all say that we're the worst, but I say we're first worst. So there you go, there you go. Up, we're first. We're number one at the worst health care. Good for us. We did it, America. We're great again. Um, so I have had like I grew up with my, my dad's from the UK. So like he had universal health care has always been like a thing in my house. My dad's like, I don't understand why we don't just have universal health care because he grew up with it. And I've run into it where like people don't it's so misrepresented that they're like, oh, but it's going to cause like taxes. And I like the freedom of choice that I have. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to lose my doctor and I don't want to lose my network because they all have this like weird envisioned like moment that like and it says a lot about both veterans care that i feel like people have this and a lot about american health care they feel like they're going to be corralled and forced to go to like a va hospital instead of their regular yeah. doctor and i'm like first of all that says a lot about what you think about veterans care second of all um that's just it just isn't the case like the choice doesn't change like it's you're still going to have access to the, whoever you want to go to like your job all the doctors become in network like i watched my my buddy was like trying to find a general practitioner and he spent like two weeks calling and calling and calling trying to find someone in network and they were all like it'd say yes for part but no for other parts and like it took him two weeks to find a general practitioner and like i have to explain to people do you really think that's like better than being able to call any doctor and go and not have to worry about it and think about it like you you'd rather call like 900 providers and like i had a healthcare story too so i had um a health a health scare when i was um 
I think it was before I was running. Um, but I started having this like colossal, like sharp pain that started at the back of my head. And it just like spread and to the point mm. it was like debilitating. Like I couldn't walk and I couldn't breathe. Um, so we called ambulance and the ambulance came and took me away um, to get from my house at the time to get to the, to, to get to the emergency room entrance was less than half a mile. It was like a third of a mile. It was a $940 ambulance bill to go a third of a mile. And my insurance was like, we did cover part of it. They covered it. Apparently 900 was the bill for me to pay. The total bill was like $3,000 and like utterly ridiculous nonsense. And so when I hear this and I hear people like talking about healthcare and they're so afraid of healthcare costs, I'm like, what if like, Imagine a world where you're like, oh, wow, I feel this weird pain in my neck and you don't have to ride it out. You can just go to any doctor and it's covered and then we all move on.